Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, this morning, once again, this is our cry. We wish, Lord, that you will use us. You will use us to bring about your purpose in the midst of men. We wish, Lord, and we desire that you will use us to bring about genuine conversion in the midst of our brethren. We are asking, Father, there will be an instrument, an instrument through which your purpose and your will for your people have come to pass. As we are studying, as we are listening, one cry in our heart is that you will refire us. You will refocus us. You will rekindle us. You will set us again ablaze to go and do exploit for you. That Lord on the pulpit, we will be effective. In our private life, we will be effective. In our leading of the flock, we will be effective. In touching people, Lord, we want to be effective. In handling the word of truth, we want to be effective. Whatever you will do to do that in our lives, do it, O oh God. Walk in us and let your glory break forth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Luke 22, verse 31 to 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan, has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren and he said unto him Lord I am ready to go with you both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell you, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou as, before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. May the Lord give insight into his word as we study what will make us effective in the ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. But before we begin to study that scripture, I want us to take the, the complement of it in John chapter 21. John 21, verse 15 down to verse 18 or maybe verse to, down to verse 19 so when they had died Jesus says to Simon Peter Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me more than this he says to him yea Lord thou knowest that I love thee he says to him feed my lambs and he says to him again the second time Simon 
son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says to him, Feed my sheep. He says to him, The third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said to him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus says unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou guardest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall guard thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he has spoken this, he says unto him, Follow me. May God speak to us that we may speak. May the Lord feed us that we may have something to feed men who gather to us week after week in the name of Jesus Christ. These two passages that I felt we should look at this morning, they may be looking, where are we going to come out from here? Especially as we are looking at what makes a man effective in the ministry. I am happy to look back into the private life of Peter. What did God do to him that eventually made him an effective minister that we began to see in the Acts of the Apostles. May I quickly note that there's no man of God that was born to be effective automatically. Ministerial effectiveness is not an inheritance. Effectiveness in ministry is not what somebody was born with. All those that God used and they became effective, he dealt with them. He did something to them. He worked on their lives. He focused on them until they became something in the hand of God. Effectiveness does not come to any man by chance. It is not a chance that anybody will become effective. It is something that God deliberately, deliberately does to a man. And as far as I can see, what Peter became in the hand of God the way Peter now handled the word of God and the Bible said the hearts of men were pierced and they were crying out what shall we do to be saved it didn't happen by chance it did not happen just like that something went in the life of this man that brought him to where he came. And for me this morning, I thought, let's take a look at what God did into the life of this man that now made him a man that when he stood up, he could say, men and brethren, and people, we not even allow him to finish preaching before they would say, excuse me, what shall we do to be saved? 
They will not even allow him to finish speaking in the house of Colinus before the people will be ready to repent and be filled with the Holy Spirit. What, how did God deal with this man? And the two passages we have read, to me, they are the two sides that every servant of God needs to look into as we are pursuing effectiveness in our lives and in our ministry. To set the first passage in its context, I would like you to note that Simon Peter had been one among the twelve that the Lord had been sitting upon and focusing upon to use for ministry. When God called him, he was casting his net uh, as a fisherman. He left that and followed Jesus along with his brother Andrew and along with other brothers whom God so called John and James. Others like Matthew, like Nathaniel, all of them that he called and he had brought them to himself. Jesus Christ even took them aside. He took them to the mount and he not only just preached, he taught them. He taught them. He taught them the principle that they would need for ministry and for life. In the midst of this, there seemed to be an emerging leadership among the disciples as the Lord was walking with all of them, watching over them, and bearing with each of their lives. And among the twelve, Simon Peter, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, they were, they seemed to be those that Jesus was focusing upon a little more than others in order to give them opportunity to provide spiritual leadership for others when he will have gone. Just like I know God has given attention to several of us here. Several of you, God has allowed you to go into theological training. God has allowed you to go into extra ministerial exposures. God has allowed you into different, different levels where you have now come to this point at which you can lead the flock or you can lead, you know, uh, a section of the, of the church and of the churches under your hand. God has been doing such things. But why God was doing that? Wanting Peter to become something in his hand. I wanted to note also that Satan is also doing something. So while we are talking about what makes a minister effective, while we are looking at what will make our ministry effective, it will not be right for us not to recognize that there is another one whose constant concern day and night and if you don't know it, I want you to know now that there is another one who is doing every research he can make and his own purpose is what can I do to render men on the pulpit powerless. What can I do to make sure that these men that are custodians of the truth, they are completely toothless and they are unable to perform what they were mandated to do. There is one that 
every day he sits down and says, I can see this man's ministry trying to break through. What can we do to scatter it? What can we do to weaken it? What can we do to render it important? Do you know the name of that person? Satan, the devil. As soon as Jesus Christ came on the platform of ministry and the Holy Spirit came upon him and God announced, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Did Satan go to sleep over Jesus? Please talk to me. The Satan fold his hand and said, Thor, the man that will take over has come. Let's, let's leave him. Is that what he did? What did he do? Do you remember what he did? Jesus was tempted severely. Not casually. Severely by the devil. At every point. What was the interest of the devil? To pull him down. To discredit him. To silence him. To make sure what he came to accomplish on earth for God, he was not able to accomplish it. Even when Jesus Christ overcame him 